Hey, Christy. Hey, Edith. Hey, which vegetable did Noah leave off the ark? Which one? The leek. <laughs> That's good. And smart. Very smart. Don't put leeks on your ark. Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners in Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening is becoming very popular. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips, a fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. It's Upside Down Tulips. Hey, hey, Christy. How are you? I'm good, Edith. How are you? Oh my gosh, it feels like a whole week since I've seen you. (laughs) I know. You know, it feels like it's been seven days. And I think it has been. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's a long time. How how have you been? Um, I've been okay. Um, I can tell you that um, some exciting news that we've got some iTunes reviews. We did? Yeah. Oh, please, please let me know. Read them out loud. Okay, this uh, this one is from Doing Hard Things, and it's a five-star review. And Doing Hard Things says, Thank you for these seeds of wisdom, ladies. I'm learning to garden because I've had unexpected time, earth, and a daily craving for pesto. Oh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that hey, is. come to me. I have so much basil. Um, I've made almost all of the mistakes you mentioned, but now I know they're mistakes. <laughs> You two make me laugh, learn, and find joy in this crazy time of, let's call them weeds. Oh. I love that. We are in a weedy time. Is there, does that their handle what they say, doing hard things? Yes. Jeez, I wonder what else hard things they're doing. Interesting. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> good. That's and nice. I can also tell you that um, we now have eight listeners from Germany. We do? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. I know one of them is my I was going to say it's probably your family. Cousin, probably. <laughs> That's so exciting. Bless our family. They have to listen. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't have to. They could lie about it, but they, they don't. They could. Maybe they, they do. We don't know. We would because we would quiz them. I would quiz them. Would you not? Yeah, I don't know. I it would. could be. I would quiz them and go, so what did you think of the so-and-so part? Oh, I, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Let's make sure Especially like near the end of the episode. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, how's your garden this week? Oh, it's pretty good. Um, oh, my gosh. Christy, I have to clarify something from last week because I spoke to a listener, um, kind of a friend of ours, and she said, so I didn't understand your pl- lateral planting of tomatoes. She said, do you mean I should bury the whole plant? Mm. I wasn't clear. May I clarify? Please that? clarify, Edith. Okay. This is the way that I like to plant tomatoes. So say you have a little seedling, say it's four inches long, okay? Dig a little trench about three inches long, about an inch and a half deep. Lay the tomato down and then cover it, but the very top, bend it upwards because mm-hmm. they're bendy mm-hmm. so that you don't bury the whole tomato. Especially when they're younger, they're more bendy. They're very, be- just like babies. But if you buy a tomato at the nursery that is 12 inches long, yeah, it's going to be tricky. Yeah. Just no, we're bury talking it deep. little. We're talking yeah. little ones. Um, and, and sorry if I wasn't clear. And I know I wasn't too. I know I wasn't lateral planting. Who talks like that? Okay. Um, oh, you know what else I did? Huh? I froze more beets. But you know what I've decided to do is I've started a big freezer bag for things like carrot tops, beet oh, tops, beet stems. For soup. For soup. So I'm, smart. I'm going to have a whole bag. Why didn't I do that? Oh, I'm kicking myself. And then, you know, you can have like a bouquet garni. You know how yes. the French have that. Oh, I'm going to start up. doing that. That is, that is such a good idea. I get these ideas when I can't sleep, you know, the tops of, of onions and stuff. Uh-huh. Just for flavor. And I will save those. And for vitamins, mm-hmm. because the, the when you make a soup, the vitamin leaves the vegetable mm-hmm. and goes into the broth. Making soup broth is such an enjoyable activity. I love it. I love it. it defines the fall and the and the comfort mm-hmm. that you make in winter. So I did that. I freeze um, chicken carcasses. I do that too. Yeah, yeah. And then when you're ready, make soup. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> it, this is good. This is good talking. Um, 
Oh, I, you know what I found? You know, I like research and I read this. I never knew that cucumbers had suckers on them. Did you know that? Suckers. Suckers. You know, like a tomato has suckers that come up through the joint. Oh. Little extra branches. They do. That's what this, I watched this whole YouTube video and it said, if it isn't a blossom, a tomato, a, a, a cucumber, uh -huh. a shade leaf, a stem or a tendril, it's a sucker. Wow. So I went through all of mine and oh, I rubbed wow. them, pinched them off, hoping to keep a strong yield. It's hard to get in there on cucumbers because they're so scratchy. They're, they're so scratchy. They are so scratchy. Yeah. And there's, you know, sometimes there's bugs and stuff. Oh my gosh, speaking of bugs, la I'm not proud of this, but last night I'm sitting there in my house and I thought I felt something move in my hair. Oh, And I just yeah. come in from the garden and I go up and it felt like a Japanese beetle. <gasps> and Christy, I screamed. <laughs> And whatever it I was, too. I screamed. I picked it out and I threw it across the room. And I have yet to find it. I don't even know what it was. So it could be a Japanese beetle planning its revenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. That makes me feel oh, so that's, much better. Oh, that's so creepy. <laughs> so creepy. Oh, my gosh. What a segue. Speaking of creepy, um, you know what's in our neighborhood now? Have you heard of dog vomit slime mold? Also called scrambled egg fungus. What? Christy, Christy, it's a real thing. It, it, it's a real thing. It's dog vomit slime mold. So it's, it's not dog vomit. No. It's a type of mold. Yes. Okay. It's a fungus that looks like dog vomit. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is in a garden, right? <laughs> So should we call this episode dog vomit and see how many people listen to it? <laughs> yeah, we could give that a try, you know, or scrambled egg fungus. Either way, it's both very attractive. So it's totally harmless. Oh, okay. If you have it, it's totally harmless. It's just disconcerting, perhaps. And did you see any in your yard? No. Okay, but I saw it, I saw it on uh, on a Facebook page for Wheat Rich Gardeners. Some people have it. So it's in the hood. That's my own little section called in the hood. Gotcha. What's okay. happening in our neighborhood? In the because hood. Edith and I just live like three blocks away from each other. Yeah. So I need to keep you informed. You know, of, if I read about something, right? You're gonna you know. got Japanese beetles, and then I got them. There you go. You <gasps> got a hummingbird. A week later, I got them. That's true. I'll let you know if I get any of this slime vomit. Yeah. Okay? And then I'm on next on the list. You will be. I could, you're a good warning system for me. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and oh, okay. So one more thing happened this week. You know, I've been talking about how my tomatoes are just green. Oh yes, I've been wanting to ask you about your tomatoes. I have one Amish paste tomato that has like a blush of red on it. Still one, and you know what I'm worried about? I'm worried that the rest of the Amish paste tomatoes will shun them for being different. <laughs> That's right, because they're Amish. Because they're Amish. Right. <laughs> and they do the shunning thing. And you also, know? you know, if you turn a little color, that's a little fancy. That is a little fancy. You know? Yeah. It's showing off. Uh-huh. Showing off. It's not black and it's not in a bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to uh, look forward to that turning totally red. And that was my pretty much my week in the garden. So you still need some tomatoes. Um, yeah, pr probably. I hate to tell you I did another huge harvest today. Oh, don't even tell me then. Did yeah, you? I, I see did. it. I see other Tonight people. for dinner, I made spaghetti bolognese, and I just took like <sighs> eight or so tomatoes and chopped them up, and it was summer in a bowl. That's nice. That's yeah. really I'll nice. I'll give you some. You know I'll. I know you. You know thank I'll keep you. you supplied. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> so what about you? What did you do? Well, I think I discovered the best gardening tip ever. What? If you want to make sure you have the most beautiful and productive garden, you should start a podcast about gardening during the pandemic. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because I feel this obligation and just to get out into the garden every day and to learn and to make it of look course. beautiful and to yes. see what I can learn. I'm like, okay, what's happening this week on our podcast? Oh, we're going to talk about fall planting. So I did some. Fall planting, which we can go into uh -huh. a little bit. And yeah. then I also think like, well, what if people come by my house and, you know, they know I have a 
podcast about gardening and they look around and go, oh, look at that. Because <laughs> sometimes around this time of the year, Edith, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm usually so busy. I'll be teaching. I'll be directing plays that the garden kind of takes a little back seat. Back, kind yeah, of, it takes a yeah. back seat. I also can get a little uh, tired of it because it could be really hot and I'm very busy yeah. and it's, you know, and things are, you know, if I haven't deadheaded, things look a little brown mm -hmm. and I don't mm -hmm. maybe have enough fall stuff to keep me occupied. And Chrissy, that, that's how I found out about the dog vomit slime mold. <laughs> uh -huh. I've been doing research. You know, I wouldn't normally do that, but you're right. I don't want to seem, I want to verify everything and I don't want to seem dumb when I'm on a podcast. And we have like an obligation. We do you know, have an obligation. Somebody's walking by thinking, you know, yeah. my yard should look halfway yeah. decent. Absolutely. And, you know, and just to, to just speak seriously for a bit, um, you know, I think, I don't know about you, but I've been dealing with like a baseline level of stress uh -huh. due to this whole situation. And, you know, some days are better than others. And some days it's harder to keep all the stress about COVID and what's going on in the world, you know, down to a reasonable level. And that one this week was was especially a little hard. And so uh, I've been very grateful to have the garden this week to go into and especially grateful for this podcast. Yeah. That I can have something productive and creative to do with my wonderful friend, Edith. You know, Christy, uh, today, uh, Southwest Gardens was having a half-off perennial uh, mm. sale today. And the, because of the stress... And Can I just say, know, Southwest Gardens is this wonderful little local nursery, what about maybe four blocks away from our houses? Family-owned, yeah, beautiful place. And, you know, I, I was feeling like, I was feeling a little stressed, a little bit depressed. So I went and I bought some beautiful, beautiful flowering perennials. Nice. I don't usually do that. And so it made me feel better. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Uh, well, one thing I could tell you that's blooming in my garden right now I'm so excited about that gave me a little joy is I have red bird in tree. Red bird in a tree. Have you ever heard of that? Is, is it an animal or is it a plant? It's a plant. A mineral. Oh, it's a it's plant. A plant. Okay. It's a rare perennial from the southern mountains of New Mexico and Arizona. It blooms, usually blooms all summer. Mine just started to bloom. And it has small red flowers that look like a flock of birds oh. perched on a tree branch. Wow. Red bird in tree. Most wonderful. Oh, you have to show me that. So that sounds beautiful. beautiful. And I also harvested beets. I forgot that I had har I made the, the candy cane kind. You know, the kind yeah. with the stripes yes. in it. It starts with a C. Yeah. I don't. So yeah. beautiful. So beautiful. colorful. Yeah. Uh, and they're so delicious. Had them on a salad. I have a present for you, Edith. You do? I do. Oh, <gasps> pickles. Oh, I my pickled God, I this love week. Pickles. These are for you. Thank you. Nice and garlicky and spicy. Oh, good. Um, I Thank did you them so this weekend, much. so they might need another week. I will, I will wait. I will, I will. I'll let them really sit and wait. And, folks, we're going to do a pickling episode, don't you think? We'll do pickling, canning, drying. Yeah, freezing. let's do a total preserving for the winter episode. Yeah, I like pickling though. I think pickling is an awful lot of, uh, it's an awful lot of fun. It's like a little chemistry, you know. You yeah, your... I did sauerkraut last year for the oh, first time. I want to learn how to do that. Well, let's talk about it on that episode. Oh, good. Okay. Well, you gave me horseradish so I could learn how. Oh, there you go. I have your horseradish, so. Um, and then I want to tell you um, the very, very last story of the tomatoes in the attic. Okay. Situation. All right. So I had these tomatoes. They were all green. I put them in newspaper and boxes and put them in the attic last year. I forgot about them. They sat up there for what? 10 months. <laughs> 10 months, right? Last week, Edith and I did an unboxing of the tomatoes and opened them up. And of these four boxes, about 50 tomatoes, there was like just stains left or a little, little round pieces of fuzzy white mold uh-huh so then i thought well i should take pictures of this so that in case people wanted to know you know what's in the box so we could put it up on our facebook and our pinterest pages and instagram and so i'm out in the yard and i had all the boxes arranged and i'm going to take a picture with my phone and i'm arranging them like oh maybe this box wants to be this way and this <laughs> box wants to be this way and i'm getting all really artistic with it i had this existential moment where i go christy what are you doing you are arranging 
boxes of 10 month old tomatoes. <laughs> that's where my life has come to. Yeah. Then, Arranging fungal rot. That's, that's yes. <laughs> Can I put that on my resume, you think? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Put it's that like on my LinkedIn metaphor, page. Isn't I'll it? put that on my LinkedIn page. Yeah, huh? do it. <laughs> Arranger of fungal rot. Uh-huh. A yeah. master. Yeah. Then I, then, okay, here's the last part about it is I thought, well, now what do I do? So I took the pictures. I thought, now what do I do with them? Well, the boxes I just, you know, recycled. But I had, you know, the tom- the fuzzy tomatoes and the stains and the newspapers. And I just hated the idea of throwing them away. So I looked up and I thought, well, could I put them in my compost pile? Yeah. And sure enough, I, I Googled, you know, composting moldy vegetables. And sure enough, you can. Uh-huh. Now, I didn't do exactly what this page said because you know how sometimes composters can be a little... Um, and I compost, folks, so I don't want people who compost to be think I don't compost. So I luck, but sometimes when people go, when they're really deep and serious composters, they really go into it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, they really, they really go down a deep hole. And what this woman are say, you saying they're judgmental? <laughs> Maybe is that what you're saying? <laughs> Maybe yeah. they go like to the ninth step on it. So what this page said was that you take your moldy vegetables and you put them in a food processor. I know, right? Oh, please. And you process. Can you imagine that? No. And you put them in, and then you have to put them in the um, the deepest part of your compost. You know, don't lay them on top. Well, I did not food process them. I just bought a new food processor, and I wasn't about to put my moldy vegetables in there. No. But I did wrap. I did take all the newspaper, and I just I put them all in the in the middle of a really good hot working compost pile. Mm-hmm. Good. And they so they have been put to rest. Good. Okay. They will find their peace now. I feel like they have been their cycle has been completed. Yeah. They're probably glad, you know, to be free of the to slip out of the earthly bounds of your attic. Exactly. They were yes. ghost tomatoes. Yeah, they were. In my attic. Yeah. And now they are at peace. Excellent. So that's the end of that's the end of the tomatoes and that's what's happening in Christie's garden this week. Hey folks, if you ever hear words or terms you're not familiar with or or you even just want a good laugh, check out the Upside Down Dictionary on our website. And if you want to see pics of our gardens, visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Thank you. What are the sexiest celebrities and hottest influencers posting on Instagram? Their Birkin bags? Their designer dresses? Their cleavage? No, it's their gardener hands. Oh, yeah. Everyone who is anyone is gardening these days. Even if you don't garden, you can look fashionable without all the digging, pulling weeds, hoeing, raking. Here at Phoebe's Phenomenales, we have the latest trends to help make your quarantine manicure stand out. Our gardener hands treatment features artisan chip nail polish and real dirt meticulously embedded under your nails. Plus, our advanced techniques will give you the appearance of cracked cuticles, scrapes and cuts, calluses, and even blisters. Uh Get that rough to the touch look that makes you look like you haven't worn gloves or put on lotion in months. For a limited time only, get a bottle of our special brittle nail polish as our gift to you mass required social distancing enforced and would it kill you to put down your phone and pop in a mint all right we're gonna talk about fall planting right now <laughs> sorry <laughs> edith and i were just staring at each other blankly like pointing at each other going you start no, no you start you, you, you start. start i don't know what to say I'll start. You, start. you start now we can't stop talking <laughs> Fall planting. Even even though it's not fall yet, but we're planting for the fall, for getting stuff done before the last frost. Before I moved to Colorado, I had never heard of fall planting. Oh. It's, it's you know, it depends on what zone you're in. Absolutely. Where you live. I lived in Minnesota, zone three. Oh, yeah, you're not going to be able when, to. When, you know. Yeah. We're what, four, four and a half, five we're, here? Oh, we're 5B. 5B. Which is a good zone to be in. Well, you know, zones are moving up, too. The warmer it gets, Fair zones point. are moving. We're going to be growing lemons before yeah. <laughs> yeah, before you know are. it. So anyway, in the tricky part is now, it's been 90 here, day after day after day. 
And, you know, little new plants don't really like that. So the tricky part is getting them to grow and survive until it cools down a mm -hmm. bit. That's they're going to the love the warm part. warmness to germinate. Yeah. And then they're going to fry, you know, unless we are very careful. So what did you plant this week? I planted radishes. Mm -hmm. I planted those French breakfast radishes. I love those. I love those too. Uh huh. And this is my third planting of radishes this year, by the way. Oh, nice. Then I planted little finger carrots. I did too. That's the ones I planted too. They have been so successful for me and they taste like candy. Yeah. I'm going to save the tops like you just Do suggested. Mm -hmm. That is such Do a it. good idea. I planted spinach. My you know, oh. my sister makes some kind of a, a harissa, some kind of a Middle Eastern topping out of them. Oh. With oil and that and some spices, and she puts it on toast. That sounds amazing. It does sound amazing, yeah. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> I planted spinach, of course. Okay, Christy, can I talk about, and I've talked about this before, but when I find something I love, I really love it, and it's that Viroflé <gasps> spinach. Yeah, this is your giant spinach. The giant, Christy, I have, I planted it three weeks ago. I normally wouldn't because it was early. Uh-huh. I have two plants of it that made it. Wow. And one of them is already bigger than a normal spinach, and I'm so excited. So I planted a bunch of that as well, hoping, you know, to get more before the frost. I'm going to plant that next year. You got to. It's wonderful. It's so nice though to have spinach when you just go like, oh, what are we gonna make? Let's have an omelet. Oh, let's. Do you have any spinach? Yeah. Just go out into the yard and get yeah. some. It's so. And it's wonderful. easy to freeze. It's perfectly easy yeah. to freeze. Yeah. I can't believe I never liked spinach when I growing up as a kid. But my only reference to spinach was canned spinach. Ooh, yeah. No wonder. <laughs> no wonder. I remember Popeye. Yes. With big forearms and he's popping yeah, that he's... right out of the can. Yeah. 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 I also planted lettuce. Mm-hmm. You know what, Christy? I have another wonderful, wonderful thing that I discovered in the lettuce family. I cannot tell you how much I love this. In fact, look, I brought I brought a little seed packet to show you. So this is called Four Seasons. And it's French. Isn't that interesting? Just like my Vera uh -huh. In French, this is called, um, let's see, I have it written down. I actually practiced how to say it. Mervier de quatre saisons. Okay, th that sounds so sexy. Well, here's the, <laughs> you know why you know why I think so, because the French have a way of putting a self-satisfied button at the end mm, of a phrase. You mm -hmm. know, like saison. <laughs> so they they're like very self-confident, satisfied, lusty people. So this is satisfied, self-confident, lusty lettuce. It's the best. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This lettuce. In fact, in this heat, Christy, I have four heads coming up that I planted the same time I planted the Vera Flay. Wow. That's unheard of. I will definitely give you some seeds. So I planted that. And I've also planted, um, what's the kind of lettuce that you use in Caesar salad? Romaine. Yeah. I planted romaine as well. That's cool. I've never pr planted romaine. There's two, there's two types. And look what I brought. I brought a seed packet of baby romaine. Because for our container gardeners, this grows in windowsills. In oh. fact, I started it in pots on my porch, and I transplanted it. Wonderful. Outside, inside, any place you want. Inside. Well, on the porch, inside yeah, yeah, ish, yeah. I guess. My daughter gave me, she also planted some, and she gave me some. And I put it in the fridge, and I forgot about it. And Christy, three weeks in, I opened it up, and it wasn't slimy. It was actually still fresh. Wow. So you can imagine how old the stuff in the supermarket is. I'm so glad you mentioned that because a lot of people container garden. Yeah. And this is perfect. I mean. It shows you don't need to have a lot of space. Uh -huh. Radishes are perfect for it, yeah. as is mm -hmm. this wonderful baby lettuce, probably the little finger too. Anything mm -hmm. little like mm -hmm. that. Speaking of little, the kale that I planted uh -huh. is called dwarf blue curled vates kale. Ooh. And I planted this because it is more compact, mm -hmm. and I was hoping it would grow faster, you know. Yes. So those are the things that I planted this week. Because we have until, in the Denver metro area, we have until about October 5th, maybe mm -hmm. longer. Mm -hmm. That's our, la our, our frost date. Yeah. You can find your own frost date by going to the uh, USDA Plant Hardiness Zone Map. 
Yeah, or you can just and Google it. Yeah. Google it. Google it find your out area. what your zone mm-hmm. is. And if you're zone four to seven, you can be doing some fall planting. Yes. Some things are actually better after a f- light frost. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Are, kale is. Raspberries mm-hmm. are. They get sweeter. Yeah. Somehow. Well, they rush to, the, when they feel that it's cold, you know, plants are not like senseless little beings, but they feel it's getting cold, so they rush to complete themselves, and that means adding mm-hmm. sugar. That's my unscientific slash scientific explanation for it. Uh, I thought that was good. Thank you. It made sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what are some of the things you do to make sure that your plants don't get fried? I water, if you have just put seeds in the ground and it's this hot, water at least twice a day. Whatever you do, don't let the ground get dry and caked because mm-hmm. they'll just die. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to keep them nourished with water. Uh, what else, What else, Christy? Um, I will, when, once they start coming up, it's, it's important to give them shade. So yeah. think about where you plant them. If you plant them by something that's already tall and growing, so I kind of look around my, my garden and I go, well, I've, I've harvested all the cauliflower. Mm-hmm. So I can plant some things there. And now my, the sunflowers are all up and they're providing nice shade. So I can plant some things around there mm-hmm. to try to find spaces that already that I already have shade. And then, of course, I made my own shade this year by putting a lawn chair mm-hmm. over <laughs> my lettuce and my like arugula. It wouldn't work for whole farms because I don't think there's lawn chairs that big, but sure. Or a lot of lawn chairs. A lot, a lot. And why not? Why not? Rather than buy like a, a cover, why not buy a lot of lawn chairs, That's right. Christine? That's right. And then, you know, as long yeah. as people are there, you know, they could weed a little. <laughs> oh, you got this all As long as they're out. hanging out. Yeah, as long as they're there. Um, and I put row covers down to shade. Mm-hmm. Some people buy whole systems of shading. Sometimes I plant them a little bit under a tree. Just a little bit under a tree. And then if you watch the sun, I love watching the sun change. Like it's already changed the light and the shade in my garden because mm. of the time of year. Mm-hmm. So if you watch that, then you, you know, if you're unemployed like me, you can, you have time to do that. You can sit around, yeah. <laughs> make your own mulch, watch where the sun is. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Oh my God. Yeah. And oh, here's Look another Look for dog thing. vomit. Look fungus. for dog vomit fungus. <laughs> Google strange things. Why not? We have to take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment. Has 2020 made you feel like you've been rode hard and put to bed wet? Do you think you're going crazy? Are your days full of stress and your nights full of scary pandemic dreams? May we suggest growing something? You can grow something almost anywhere on a windowsill, a porch, a balcony, a community garden, even on the roof. Become a gardener. You'll be able to say things like, think the rain will hurt the rhubarb, completely unironically. You'll learn that rutabaga is not just what actors say in a crowd scene. Rutabagas are things you grow. Pass the time, the long, long times. It's only August. With the speedy radish and the slow growing carrot, Water it, feed it, love it, then eat it. Or smoke it, we don't judge. Remember, in these tough times, bookmark your sanity. Grow something. Brought to you by the neighbors who hear you screaming in the night. Hey, everybody. We're back. Uh, One more thing, Christy, which is sometimes I get impatient and I think things are not coming up. So I plant more. I've done that. That's not terrible. It's a mistake that's not terrible. <laughs> I did What's, that this year. I did. I do that all the time. But I did that when I planted. I, I winter sowed in milk jugs some peppers. And I thought, well, they didn't work. So then I just threw some <laughs> zinnia seeds on top. Uh-huh. So then I had peppers and zinnia seeds. In the same milk container. jug. Container, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not a terrible thing. I mean, it's harder to maybe rectify that error in a milk jug. But outside, what's the worst that could happen is that you thin them out and you eat the thinnings. Yes. Right? And, it, and, you know, it's important to remember to thin out when you are fall planting. Yeah. It's hard for me to do that. It's I hard for, you know, it's hard for a lot of people. They're like, oh, no, my little babies. Yeah. Yeah. 
But when they get about three inches high, you yeah. should thin them out. And you know, you can you can't eat the little. I eat them. I eat, yes, eat them. Put you them in a salad. Them. Put them in a salad. Put them in a um a bag a, for soup. Yeah. A bag for soup. Uh, you could juice it. Juice it. You can do anything with it. You know, or if you're feeling cavalier, throw it on the compost pile. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> compost it. <laughs> compost it. It's like a big circle. <laughs> Nothing goes to waste. Yeah. And um, there are lots of other things besides what we just mentioned that you can fall plant. You can fall plant beets, can't you? Yes. In fact, it's, I need to get more room. If I get when I get more room, when, some, when I get my broccoli all harvested, then I'm going to put beets more beets down. Okay, let me ask you about this. You mentioned this planting seedlings. Now, there's no seedlings available in any of the nurseries at this time of year. Not that I've seen. If they were smart, they would. If they were smart, but you could also be growing your own seedlings. You could you could grow your own little baby the broccoli cabbage christy i'm going to do that next year because as you know or have forgotten and keep you know saying things about your great cauliflower and hurting me deeply <laughs> i'm sorry it's fine, so it's fine. <laughs> really it's fine I, it was so beautiful i yanked it was the most Stop beautiful ca- I, I i yanked one out of the ground the other two i'm giving them a week and then they're done they're done the clock is ticking it's ticking babes let's go it's too late but anyway uh Next year, I'm going to do that just in case something like that happens again. I will have seedlings. But when would you, when would you have to start them? Well, that's interesting. You know, I bet, in, I bet if you started, I think if I did it in my milk jugs, you know, if I winter sowed them in my milk jugs outside. Because that's what I did with my zucchini this year. Yeah, but in the middle of the summer, you would do it. So if you're doing it for fall planting, when would when you would make I do the that? seedling? That's really, maybe four weeks before, you think? Four weeks before planting. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Four. That's right. And then, and then put them in shade. Just just count backwards from the first fall date. Count yeah. Count backwards. Check your seed well, packet. You know, that's a very interesting question because depending upon where you live, you have, you have about four to eight weeks to do fall planting. And yeah. then just pray for a late frost. Yeah, absolutely. And don't forget too, and this is like, there, there was one time, remember when we were at a poker game and there was a... Side note... Edith and I, before when in the before time, were <laughs> <laughs> in the fun time when we had fun and a life and stuff like that. We were members of a super fun poker game where essentially what we gals did was we just exchanged the same five dollars around to yeah. each other every year, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bought buy-in was what five? Bucks? Yeah, we just traded the same great. five bucks. It was just fun. But anyway, remember like an ice storm started and we broke it up. All, you and I, we ran home to save our tomatoes. Yes. <laughs> because you can do that. You, you yeah. Can, we saved them. I saved mine. I have a gigantic, in my garage, a gigantic pile of towels and old sheets. Mm-hmm. Buckets. Buckets wrap around peppers and uh, tomatoes because you, you don't want to lose them, especially if they're fall plantings. And especially if it's just that one weird day of a yes. really beautiful fall. Yeah. Like I've made this mistake as an early gardener and on, I'm gardening and I have all this beautiful stuff out there and mm-hmm. then there'll be a cold snap and then that'll be it. And you'll and, take everything and in. And everything will be, and everything, yeah, take everything and everything's gone and everything. But if uh-huh. I had just covered, yeah. then the next day it's beautiful. Next day it's back you know, up to 75 This can happen a lot in Colorado where yeah. we can get big temperature swings. Yeah, the next day it's a beautiful 70, yeah. 80 degree day. And I could have had another couple weeks left. Yeah. From that weird weather. And so, right, blankets. So mm-hmm. this is protecting your garden and especially your little seedlings yeah. from frost. Now, um, any, I cover, boy, when it's in the what's in the upper 30s, I cover. Uh, yeah, and we're talking about, we're not talking about ground plant, root vegetables. We're not talking about stuff like carrots. Mm-hmm. They're tougher. And True. beets and stuff. But stuff like spinach, mm-hmm. lettuce, that, that it can, can, probably cannot take a frost. So I, w- I will cover that like right away. You know what's interesting about spinach is that th- when this spinach I just planted, I'll probably, if, you know, if it's a nice fall, I'll get some spinach out of it. And then it'll snow on it and the spinach will go away, uh-huh. but it'll come back in February. Yeah, it does. And I will have spinach in March. Now, the bad part about that, of course, is it's a sign of climate change. <laughs> Right. It's overwintering. Yeah. Which it never used to do. That's and such a, yeah. May, may I just say that anybody who's a gardener, we didn't sit around going, 
oh no, climate change is a hoax. We didn't do that because we're out there and we saw the changes. We saw the bugs overwintering. Bugs yeah. as well. It's it's empirical evidence. It's empirical evidence, which means I think evidentiary, something like that. We've yeah. seen it ourselves. Yeah. We so really as nice as it is to have spinach in February, it's a little bittersweet. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. But looking on the bright side, yum spinach. <laughs> Do you ever put row covers uh, over? Um, I do. I bought frost cover uh, last year. So I, it's this gigantic piece, which I also use for shade now. I Just bought this, some too. You did? I bought yeah. mine at Gardener Supply. Uh-huh. And it's a it's a fabric. It looks like a fusible material for those people who sew or things like mm-hmm. that. Very light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got mine at Southwest Gardens. Uh, and, and that has saved me. That's saved so much. Like when... When my lettuce, like this wonderful lettuce that I love so much, the quatre saison, <laughs> satisfied. That lettuce, um, that came up in February. And so when it got really cold, I was so excited about it, I put the frost, I put the cover on, the frost cover, mm-hmm. to make sure that I would have it in the spring. And I started eating lettuce pretty much the beginning of March. Mm. That was great. Uh, do you, you don't have a cold frame though, do you? I don't. No. I don't either. I think my big dream is that I will someday have a greenhouse. Do you have a husband? <laughs> I do. Could he build a greenhouse for you and then come over to my house? <laughs> or even a little cold frame? You know, I had a cold frame. My mom always had a cold frame. Those things are fantastic. And it's just a little box that has that's made out of wood and glass. You can, you can put an old door an, a, with windows on the top. Yes, you that's how I did it with the window. And you, and you could just plant there, and you, but just the glass covers it. Yes. And then it, it at night, it protects it. And then in the day, you lift the lid so it gets fresh mm-hmm. air, but it doesn't freeze at night. Those things are wonderful. Yeah. Fall planting. I never did it before, but I do it now, now I that I have it. time. Yeah. I, and you I can just, have all... Who doesn't want... Fresh vegetables, even in October, November, if you okay, can stretch so Raise it. your hand out there. Who doesn't? Anybody? Ah, <laughs> uh, nobody. I'm not seeing anybody raise their hand, Christy. <laughs> it's a good thing to have. <laughs> can I share this one thing with you, Edith? Yes. Uh, you know, we do the, our inspiration every week. And I, we, I have a nice inspiration quote for us at the end of our episode. But I found this one. It's not so much of an inspiration, but I thought you'd enjoy this okay. quote. Okay. It's by one of my favorite writers, Gertrude Stein. Oh, okay. Is it a rose is a rose is a rose? Is that what it is? It's not that quote, turnip but that's... Turnip is a turnip is a turnip? <laughs> what is it, Christy? She says, A vegetable garden in the beginning looks so promising. And then, after all, little by little, it grows nothing but vegetables. <laughs> nothing, nothing but vegetables. <laughs> What a great dark way of looking know, at things. so Gertrude Stein, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I just imagine this little kid out there going, I like this vegetable gardening and vegetable planting. It's so fun. Uh-huh. But oh no. Oh no. Hey, where's my pony? All it grew is vegetables. Oh uh, no. Nothing but vegetables. It's wrong. Where's the candy? <laughs> and my pony. <laughs> my candy pony. <laughs> Good quote, Christy. <laughs> Ring, ring. (laughs) It's time for mailbag. (gasps) Ring, ring. I'm going to start off, Edith, with a letter. Full disclosure. It's from my sister. Oh, nice. My sister Lori in Illinois. Here's what she says. I had in mind to plant wildflowers by seed in my backyard. I turned over the ground, raked it out, scattered the wildflower seeds, and gently raked the seeds into the ground. So far, so good, right? Well, because I wanted to prevent weeds from popping up, I proceeded to sprinkle preen over the seeded soil. And I don't know if folks know this, but preen is a great uh, weed preventer. I use it in my yard all the time. Okay, she goes on to say, and so she did it, and she regretted it. Garden fail. I had forgotten that preen not only prevents weed seeds from germinating, but all seeds <laughs> fortunately all was not oh. lost like you both said gardens are really forgiving because i was actually able to redeem myself and my garden by turning the soil over again so the preen was then 10 inches underground 
Then I spread a whole bunch of flower seeds down and hoped for the best. And to my surprise, it worked. Lots of wildflowers survived and blossomed. Nice. That's a lot of work to get 10 inches That's really hard underground work. again yeah. to get those yeah. seeds back in. I wonder if she's any relation to that person that gave us the review, hard work done. Remember they were called working hard or something? Oh, right. Yeah. And if she is any relation... Then that'd be a relative of mine because that's my sister. So then everyone that listens to this is related <laughs> to us. That's what we're saying. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's just depressing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so but preen is great. And I got to say, I've sprinkled it in wrong places before, too. I mean, yeah. you, you can forget, but it's a great little tool. Do you have a letter, Edith? I have a letter. Okay. Christy, do you remember in episode one, your mistake with the bindweed? Yes. Remember what you did? I think that really hit. This is from Catherine. I chopped it all up and it was everywhere. This really, really uh, resonated with uh, Catherine. She titles her letter, The Great Bindweed War of 2018. Oh, no. Yeah. In early 2018, I had an intense spring and early summer workload, and my garden, outside of planting the tomatoes, was pretty much ignored. By the time I actually turned my attention to the flower beds, the mighty bindweed was everywhere, so incredibly dense, having a fine old time attaching itself to and climbing all the standing larkspurs, sunflowers, mm. and chain link fence. Yeah. It was a freaking jungle. The bindweed is evil. Ah, like a giant green blanket of bindweed draped over every possible surface. <laughs> and of course, they were all in full bloom, blooming, blowing their nasty little seeds everywhere. It was overwhelming. But my cat, Bella, Loved it, loved it, loved it. What? In fact, she had created for herself several awesome bindweed caves where she would hunker down out of sight in dense shade and watch those birds. She had one particularly intricate bird blind in, in among the sunflower forest and would spend hours out there. It took me forever to get it all cleaned up and dug up, and I do mean forever. That is not an exaggeration. And to this day, each spring, Kitty Bella asks me if we are going to grow bindweed again, <laughs> Like that glorious summer of 2018. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. Bella loving her bindweed. I have. And, and you know what? It's nice. It's like she, that year the garden was for the cat. <laughs> that's there right. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah, the cat was happy. The cat was happy. The garden's not just for us, you know. Uh, yeah, that's looking on the bright side right there. Oh, thanks, yeah. Catherine. Well, I have one more letter from Lindsay from the great city of Denver. Hello, lovely ladies. Can I just say that I love hearing your voices when I listen to your podcast? I wonder if you plan on doing a container garden episode. I have only a balcony and love to grow things on it. I have very mixed results, but bless my heart, I sure do try. My most recent disaster involved some very pretty pansies and a swarm of aphids who decided they were delicious. Oh. They won. Big cheers to you on your podcast and your excellent gardens, XOXO Lindsay. Oh, how nice. And yes, let's put that on the schedule. Let's put the containers on, on our schedule. Good idea. Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, that's a great idea. And uh, thanks for saying you like our voices. Yeah, that was nice too. I wonder who she liked better though. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I bet I bet maybe mine. I think mine. Or maybe okay, yours. Don't look so hurt. Stop it. <laughs> Don't look so hurt. <laughs> What's wrong with my voice, Edith? Oh, nothing at all. Only been smoking for seventy years. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> See, I think we should wrap up real big. <laughs> I will start to speak French if you do not stop that right now. Uh, we love getting your letters, friends. So please send us your favorite gardening mistakes. Or your tomato stories, your squirrel stories, your your victories. Or if you have stories about fall planting, about uh, broccoli or lettuce or your favorite type of carrots. You can write to us at UpsideDownTulips at gmail.com or at our website on UpsideDownTulips.com. And now... Here's an inspiration for the week to take with you into the garden. This is by Jenny Uglo. We might think we are nurturing our garden, but of course, it's our garden that is really nurturing us. 
Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe and follow us for you like to listen to podcasts. Get your new episodes right away so you're all set to listen entirely offline. It's free. Tell your friends. Special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you'd like to hear more of Denise's music, go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link on our website. And special thanks to our friend and talented actor, Leslie O'Carroll. Don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Upside down to